It's my music top 10 and we're at 1968. Isn't it exciting? I was a mere smidger at 14. And what we got here? Well, I have to say that uh, these albums really didn't hit my ears uh, that year. Uh, most of them didn't. Although a few did, and I will uh, refer to that as we go on. But at number 10, I've got Lady Soul by Arita Franklin. I discovered this album really last year, and it's an awesome set of soul by Arita, who's recently passed away. Uh, a natural woman and people get ready are the highlight songs on this album. Get to listen to it. She is really on top form. Uh, at number nine is SF Sorrow by The Pretty Things. Now, there is a lot of talk about Tommy by The Who as being a rock opera and the first rock opera. Wrong. SF Sorrow by The Pretty Things was the first uh, rock opera. And, uh, of course, it didn't really sell... Uh, it was greeted with sort of almost ignorance. But what a fantastic uh, collection of songs it is. Uh, and uh, I really suggest that you get to listen to it. Um, it was uh, performed live about 15 years ago by the, um, by the band who got together again. Uh, and uh, I've got a copy of that. But the, the highlights are Old Man Going, uh, Bracelets, uh, Trust, and the very amusing Baron Saturday. It's a tremendous piece of work. At number eight, uh, Fairport, Fairport Convention, by Fairport Convention. It's uh, almost uh, um, unbelievable to, to realise the quality of musicians that were in this band, Ian Matthews. Uh, Richard Thompson and of course uh, Sandy Denny, Dave Mattox uh, and they put together a pretty great uh, debut album I Don't Know Where I Stand, Sunshade and Chelsea Morning um, it's a little dated now but this was the birth of an awesome uh, English band that uh, uh, joined sort of folk music to rock music at seven, the debut album by Family in a Doll's House. Uh, now, I did hear this in 1968. I didn't get a copy of the vinyl until a bit later. Uh, it's a bit of a concept style album with tracks joined together into one long sequence. Um, uh, the uh, Roger Chapman, the vocalist, is extremely powerful. Uh, and Charlie Whitney, of course, on guitars, uh, was very instrumental in terms of the music. Uh, the Breeze, Old Songs, New Songs and The Chase are my highlights. At number six is the band Music from Big Pin. Now, the band, of course, had been working for a number of years as uh, Paul, Bob Dylan's backing band. Uh, some uh, initially called the Hawks later to become the band but this was their first uh, album uh, away from Dylan and it was a masterpiece a very different style of music really that was coming out of America at the time it, it sort of uh, combined a, a country uh, southern soul and blues and uh, it was absolutely awesome. The Weight is by far the standout track, but I like This Wheel's on Fire, which was uh, remade by Chuli Driscoll and the Brian Auger Trinity and became a hit here. Caledonia Mission is a tremendous track. And Garth Hudson, on, uh, on his, um, his input on Chest Fever. Okay into the top five and it's Beggar's Banquet by Ro the Rolling Stones. This is by far my favorite uh, Rolling Stones album. I've done a, a, a video on this album 
which extensively goes through it track by track. Suggest you check it out. Uh, at number four, The Notorious Bird Brothers by The Birds. Uh, I found this album a lot later than 1968, um, but uh, some superb stuff on this uh, with David Crosby and Roger McGuinn at the top of their game. Uh, going back, wasn't born to follow, and the, 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 the gentle draft morning is superb. This is uh, American pop uh, at its very, very best. At number three is Led Zeppelin 1. Led Zeppelin arrived in 1968 and this album became a monster. Um, why? Well, because it was so damn good. Um, Page, uh, Plant, Bonham and John Paul Jones, uh, the members of Led Zeppelin, we got uh, hard rock, I wouldn't call it heavy rock, hard rock, heavily influenced by blues and uh, uh, original material as well, although they did do cover versions. Dazed and Confused uh, is regarded as one of their highlights. Uh, Baby, I'm Gonna Leave You. I love this song. I love Robert's vocal delivery. He's like he's pleading with his ex-lover uh, with regard to saying goodbye. And Communication Breakdown, another song about uh, a broken love. Oh, magical. At number two, uh, Van Morrison, uh, Astral Weeks. Um, uh, many regard this as his masterpiece. I agree with them. Uh, I have to say, when it came out, I couldn't understand it. It just wasn't my style of music. Now, I consider it up there in my overall top 10 of all time. Uh, the Way Lung Lovers Do, Cypress Avenue, which is gorgeous, and the infamous Madame George. Say no more, Van Morrison, his first solo album. Oh dear, um, uh, amazing. But at number one, it's a Jimi Hendrix Experience, Electric Ladyland. Um, the double album, this was the f uh, final uh, album that Hendrix recorded before his untimely death in September uh, 1970. Uh, and it's very difficult to pick out favourites. I would suggest that side two is relatively weaker, um, but uh, Burning of the Midnight Lamp is an absolutely awesome song, as is Gypsy Eyes. Uh, so uh, the third side has that extremely long passage called, um, um, what is it called? Anyway, you know which one it is. Um, and uh, my highlights are on side four. Um, I love Voodoo Child, Slight Return, but all along the watch hour, the Dylan song is immaculate. On side one, uh, you can't go further than Voodoo Child, which was live in the studio with such luminaries as Ed Cassidy on drums and the very, very young Stevie Winwood on keyboards. Um, Voodoo Child, um, well, probably one of the greatest blues uh, jams that you're ever likely to hear. Uh, so, so that's it. That's 1968.